Hi there and welcome back to my channel. I hope you enjoyed the uh, last time guided healing session. And how did it work for you? Did you notice some shifts in yourself, differences? Well, I hope you did because I did. Last time we talked about and did some healing steps about the voice of your inner critic. Clearing out criticism. Criticism you have to your, towards yourself. Criticism you have towards others. And what I personally noticed last week is that I decided to be more gentle with myself. Be more kind. And this brings me to this week's topic. And so if you feel uncomfortable at the moment, you're in the right place. Because that also means you are ready to release a bunch of, of stuff. If your spirit is attuned to this healing, it all comes up. And most often your spirit encountered one of my spirit or one of my uh, angels. And they prepared you to attend this healing. And you must know a few things about me. me. I experienced my enlightening, uh, my awakening in 1999. So that's a long time ago. And nowadays we are really at the verge of awakening as mankind. And I noticed that a lot of people are looking forward to awakening. But what is it, awakening? A lot of people think it's fun. A lot of people think you only um, feel love, you feel the kindness, you feel an awakened part of you. Well, partially that's true. But there are some more aspects to awakening and that is, for example, getting aware who you are. You will get more aware uh, what is you. And we are more than our physical body, which can be touched, hurt, but also cherished. We are more than our thoughts, we are more than our feelings. We have, for example, uh, an astral body. That's the body we step into when, we f when our body, physical body falls asleep and we go traveling, dreaming. And we also have a mental body, a spiritual body. We have aura layers, we have chakras. And then there's time. Time is interesting. You have, most of you are familiar with linear time and focused on this lifetime. But when you truly awaken, when you truly awaken and not like a spiritual thing uh, where you're higher and you raise your frequency and vibration, you are also step into a higher awareness. And in that higher awareness, you become aware of your previous lifetimes. You become aware of the um, several paths in front of you which you can take. And becoming aware of your previous lifetimes can be fun, but it also can be devastating. It can be extremely painful. And over the last 20 years, I learned um, some ways to deal with it, to cope with it, to heal myself. And with healing myself, I also heal others. For example, when I experienced a lifetime where I endured extreme disappointment. And if in that lifetime I could not cope with disappointment, it could result in a devastating action, like suicide. That is an option, that's a possibility. Of course, suicide can also be caused by other reasons, but let's say it's this cause. And then your body is dead. You committed suicide. Well, great. Now you gain some karma. Now you have to deal with the same life lessons over and over and over till you process it. 
So this is a way you can take a look at your life. You can take a look at uh, what are the life lessons you have to deal with. I have several core life lessons I have to deal with. And at the same time, this is the most pleasant lifetime. Because this is the lifetime I can process a lot of inadequate processed past lifetime stuff which are influencing my current lifetime. So that's great. That's why I do also this healing. Because what is the fun of it or the functionality of it? Knowing how to do all these healings when I don't share them. And I just keep them for myself. That would be pretty... Mm, what's the word? Egoistic, wouldn't it? And I also know that in these times, a lot of healing is needed. There are a lot of healers stepping up and providing healing in their way. I do it in my way. And one way is by presenting these YouTube uh, videos, which you can access for free. In the future, I will also do paid video healings, but that is in the future. That's not today. Today, you're free to participate. And let's go back to the topic. How is it even possible that you feel disappointment? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I would really like to know what you think because from the comments I can learn, I can offer a new healing step. So that's a good way. Leave a comment, I can do something new. From my personal experience, disappointment comes from expectations which were not fulfilled and I expect for example that I had a running business for many many years now that didn't happen I disappointed myself I disappointed my life partner because not having a running successful business also means not having that much money. So, there again, we kick in the life lessons again. What do I learn from it? You know what, what drove me to do space clearing? If you want to know that, I have to take you back to 1986. If I take you back to 1986, I was 12 years old. And my dad came home. And I, I the, the, the whole memory is a little bit fuzzy, but it's really an extreme important uh, break point in my life. My dad came home for whatever reason. He let me pack my backpack. I had this Kermit Green backpack. And he told me, I was 12 years old, to pack clothing, clothes into it, because he didn't want me in the house anymore. And I was... I couldn't understand, I couldn't grasp why, but my dad was standing next to me, so I, I did what he said, packed my backpack, and he tried to shuffle me out of the house. At that moment, my mom interfered, and because she said it was outrageous that he was kicking a 12-year-old on the street. My, my mom went with me that night and my whole life changed. Decades of moving around was a result. By the time I hit 45 years old, I moved around 45 times. And the last time we moved, that was last year, May. And that's the place we live now. And I already said for years, well, I'm only a few houses away from home. And I think we finally found a home. And in finding home, a lot of healing occurs. A lot of wounds are being uncovered because there is space, there is safety to do real deep healing. 
perhaps you are in that moment also, that you can do deep healing transformational uh, sessions with yourself. Now I can see the gift of all those years moving around, going from place to place, from job to job. Because do you know what I learned there? I learned to read spaces. I learned to read housing space, building space, business space. I learned to differentiate between so many things that is plain amazing. And what I also learned, really important, that the housing space you live in and the people surrounding that housing space, the neighbors, is really important and tied to your life lessons you have to process. So over the last couple of years, you can imagine, I also take a close look at the neighbors we had and reflected that inward. Like, hmm, I see this reflected. Where do I act that way in myself? Why do I do that? What caused that? And can I change it? Can I heal it? That certain uh, way of doing. And when I changed, often what occurred is we moved to the next house. But being on the road, on finding our house, our home, our place where we live, retreat, heal, have fun. And from here we can travel to other places in the world to return back home again. The need for reading spaces isn't there anymore. Because we have our home. But wouldn't it be a shame to let go of all those years of training and not doing with this gift anything? No, I don't think so, that's why I did it. I really think my life was the way I lived it because a lot of gifts, a lot of golden nuggets were hidden in my life path. And so I cherished them when I found them and I took them with me, those golden nuggets, and trained them and evolved them further. And this is one of the reasons I do space clearing. I do family space clearing, building space clearing, business space clearing, you name it. So we set our grounding to do the present time, press the angels of high magic to connect me with the consciousness of the spirit of the center of the planet. And allow the spirit of the center of the planet to visit my grounding whenever it's required and needed during this video or any other time after. A few deep breaths. Request the angel of magic to set up a color grounding healing and run earth and cosmic energies via the color grounding healing. Have you seen the video how to transform your um, toxic reactions on how you respond to a disappointment? How was it for you? Did you feel in the weeks following that healing some changes? I hope you did. My name is Holistic Helen. I'm a holistic healer living in Switzerland and Offering this free guided healing session is my contribution to the YouTube community, uh, also to the Facebook community. And it's my way of assisting you to help process some difficult uh, stuff in life. And 
why is it often difficult to process certain stuff? Uh, a lot of emotional responses, reactions, um, mindsets, they cannot be transformed in the emotional or mental uh, space because the true core cause triggering it resides in the spiritual plane. So, when you have certain reactions and behavior being caused by a spiritual uh, cause, then you have to transform it in the spiritual plane. If, for example, a certain depression is linked to something what happened in an underworld, you might, might call it a hell, um, you have to transform it there. I've been trained to do that for many years now. And I will not publish videos how to do that yourself. I think that is inappropriate because a lot of people can uh, misuse that uh, knowledge. And I don't think it will be appreciated by the underworld. So uh, I don't do that. But what I can do is offer you um, healing, guided healings guided by angelic forces. Like the angels of the high laws, the angels of high magic, the holy guardian angel. That I can do. I have to attune for a few moments to my angelic helpers, to my spiritual support team. What step to do? Because I have no idea. They just, I think, 45 minutes ago, they gave me the sign up. We're going to take a video. Let's do that. So, wash my hair, put on some fresh clothes, and here we go. What triggered me personally to take this video was not only them telling me, but I was watching a video on YouTube from this guy who was doing uh, energy uh, videos. He talks about uh, shifts in energy, what we can expect, etc. etc. Um, I will make sure the link of his channel will be placed in the subscription, because I forgot his name. What struck me in his video is that uh, for those who already went through darkness and went through several processes, uh, the current time, the COVID-19 time, the pandemic, um, has little to no effect. Well, for me, it has little to no effect. For me, it's this time, it's pretty okay because I've been through all of those shitty stuff already. And what he said is what many of you uh, can do is hold space for others to heal. And he said something specific what really struck me. And it is holding space and holding the vibration of transformation. <laughs> you might understand why this struck me because that is what my life is about. It is about transformation and um, peeling off the layers of uh, pain and suffering. Why was it caused? Where was it caused? Was it caused in this life? Was it caused in uh, a past life? Was it caused in a bloodline? And there are so many ways to transform it. And I'm not going to teach you in this video how to transform at all. There are other videos for doing that. But I would like to do a little bit of playing for those who feel um, resonance with holding space, holding the frequency of transformation for others. Because I'm pretty sure many of you are already a long way on your spiritual path. And I also think you have your uh, own tools, you train your own methods. And I would like to add something to that, if that's okay with you. And what I would like to add, let's first start with the basics. I would like you to create your safe healing space as you are used to. And call in your spiritual support team. I'm going to do that also. And of course, before doing this, uh, uh, this video startup, I started up already setting up my own uh, healing space, so my space is already protected and confidential. And my angelic helpers uh, are entering the space. 
So while preparing your um, healing space, I'm gonna sip a little bit of lemon water and I would suggest you prepare also a drink for yourself. Lemon water, uh, cucumber water, celery juice, tea, whatever you like. And I wonder, have you also seen the video where I discussed the law of trust as a way to transform your uh, levels of existential fears? Well, we're going to play with that in this video. We are going to play with uh, two higher universal laws. Well, three as a matter of fact. The law of identity, the law of trust, the law of frequency. And I noted that the angelic uh, helpers the uh, angels of the higher laws are connecting with all of you, with your higher selves, with your holy guardian angel, and with your uh, spiritual support uh, team. For those of your spiritual support team, they are now given the opportunity to receive a step up uh, uh, ritual, meaning they will be educated in the high astral realms and they will be educated um, about some higher universal laws so they can assist you better And what also occurs, the Age of High Magic are uh, giving us a precious gift for those who want. And I'm going to tell you what they're going to do and then you can state in your mind, in your thoughts or out loud if you like it or not. Uh, they would like to um, set up and perform a ritual where misuse of magic in your past, that can be the past of this life, the past of previous lives, it can be misuse of magic in your coming from your bloodline. All that misuse will be dissolved, karma will be completed. And dissolving this misuse, it's not like it's like it doesn't exist anymore. And for that, the age of high magic and the age of the high laws have to do uh, certain steps to make that vanish, to make that charge uh, leave your space. And for those who are psychic, they can go with the angels of high magic to the high magic temple created in the higher astral realms, specifically for these uh, type of videos. That's funny. <laughs> I uh, noticed that they, um, a lot of the viewers will stay in their body and the uh, high magic temple will be created around you. So you don't have to leave your body. Well, that's beneficial. The more embodied you are, the more centered you are, the more aligned you are, uh, the easier it is to receive these healing steps. Why is it important to be centered? There's this expression, she who rules her center rules her universe. And of course for me it's the same, he who rules his center rules his universe. And that's pretty important. That's also why if I have you let create a magical circle around you, with a protective shield on the outside, that I have you centered in the middle. It's also you are centered in time at that moment. You have future and the past is uh, equally divided uh, in front and uh, behind you. 
And I'm at a point that I say I have no I have no idea where this healing is going, so that's good. Of course, I've done this a few times now, these healings, and I know then we go into a flow. Not sure I'm going to edit it. If you allow yourself um, space to process your pains and your suffering, you are giving yourself a gift. So why not use current times to do that? I would suggest that the one thing we need to learn is no longer suppressing it, but allowing it to flow up or to flow down via the grounding or either via the, the seven chakra. What I've learned over the years is when something flows out of the seven chakra, it was not your energy to begin with. It came in via the seventh. But also sometimes I feel like now a lot of energy is flowing out of my ear. That was not my information to begin with, but it entered via my ear and it just flows out. And that is because the angels of high magic, they activated the law of identity for all of us. And by activating the law of identity, as a result, that what is not our identity, but from somebody else, that can be a loved one, that can be a co-worker, that can be a client, that can be whomever you meet on the street, for who, for whatever reason, don't energy in your space, it is just now, just by activating the law of identity, flowing out of your space, and returning in a neutral state to the original source. And for those who like, they can start up a color grounding healing. I can guide you through a quick one. And that will be commencing with the color red. Orange. Yellow. Green. Blue. Violet. Purple. Pink, opalescent, white, grey, brown, all colors of the rainbow. And let's do a quick a golden sun fill up. Because when you do healing, a lot of energy is leaving your space. It's always pleasant to fill up your empty spaces with your own energy, not from somebody else, but your own. And you can do that by intention. The power of intention is, <laughs> is a power. So by intention we call back all our energies, release them made available to space, place and time, whether it has been released in the past, present, future, whether it has been released on the spiritual plane, mental plane, astral plane, etheric plane, and allow all these energies to flow back into a golden sun. I'm doing spirit to spirit teaching at the moment, so I notice that a lot of uh, viewers, their spirit is seeing exactly what I'm doing self. And all this energy is being retrieved in the golden sun above our head, about the arm length above us. It is being raised to the highest creation, of vibration purified, call it divine joy, divine wisdom, divine truth. It's always pleasant to have a few additional um, divine qualities being added to the golden sun energies, your own energies. And allow these energies to flow down, filling up your seven chakra, flowing down, filling up your six chakra, flowing down, filling up your fifth chakra. Flowing down, filling up your heart chakra. Flowing down, filling up your third chakra. Flowing down, filling up your second chakra. Flowing down, filling up your first chakra. And allow it to expand out, fill up the whole flesh body, which is you. And I always psychically follow the energy then, filling up my, my arms, my chest, my legs, feet, 
And I see it then flowing out into my aura layers, in front of me, behind me, left of me, right of me, above me and below me. And I have myself balanced within my aura. And by the law of microcosm, microcosm, we can allow this golden sun filled energies to flow into our etheric body. It's already there, because that's where the chakras resides, flowing into our uh, astral body, mental body, spiritual body. So, how does this feel? Mm -hmm. you feel do you feel more embodied at the moment? Well, that was the intention behind it. So I see that they pull my attention back to the, the ritual of dissolving misuse of magic in the past. And I noticed that a few viewers uh, are relieved with it. And you know, all that misuse of magic in the past it's not to be taken too seriously. It's not being taken like it's not working, because it does, but it's just, it all um, is aligned with the spiritual part of development we as mankind are doing. So in the old days, like medieval or even 2000 years ago, when we did magic, or even in these days when we do magic, there's a lot of magic done with the mind. Like, I want to have a black jeep. So, allow the universe to manifest a black jeep. But is it in my path of destiny to receive that black jeep? Is it within my destiny to have a job which pays for that black jeep? Or was my destiny a whole different kind of job with a different paycheck? Who knows? Well, your higher self knows and your spirit knows. So, uh, black magic is mind magic, and that's okay. And we're going to do more high magic, because I'm also talking about the angels of high magic. And high magic is magic being performed, seen as spirit. And what is spirit? Spirit is, I see it as your higher self. It is like an... I can have it wrong. I don't say I have all the knowledge, but... To me, after 20 years of training, spirit is something between my high self and my soul. It's my spirit, has a lot of knowledge, it does uh, contain a lot of memories of previous lifetimes. It also is really aware what it wants to achieve in this life, how to create it, what is needed to learn uh, chosen life lessons. And I prefer my spirit to create than I let myself create. Because, you know, in daily life, um, there might be some differences in point of view what to achieve in life. That's, uh, <laughs> that's okay. But if you want uh, to create your life, be aware what aspect of yourself creates life. That is. Uh, Something I am amused uh, by, of course, because yeah, I fell flat on my face a few times because I created from the warm aspects of myself. But I learned from that. That's okay. My spiritual support team is now pointing out that we can go to the next uh, step in this healing. And that would be a connection with the law of trust. And for those who watched the previous video already, they have already embedded a perfect symbol of the law of trust. And what I realized today is that we haven't played with the law of trust that much. I think it's time to do that. So, the law of trust. The angels of the high universal laws are willing to uh, symbolize the law of trust and have it embedded in your personal space. If those already have it, we can just activate it whenever it's needed, it's required, or we feel like, oh, I feel a little bit uh, anxious. Uh, hmm. I don't like this feeling. 
you know what, I'm going to activate the law of trust. And you can do that by stating, I am now activating the perfect symbol of the law of trust. And once, once doing that, me personally, I feel more instantly more embodied in my physical body. I like that. Because for me, being grounded, being fully embodied, is one of the most difficult things to do. And I had a friend who drew um, a life tree for me. And my tree almost had no roots at all. And she said, wow, Helen, your tree was amazing, almost no roots. If you are capable of grounding, if you figured out all the ways uh, needed to be grounded, you can teach the whole world. <laughs> Tell me about it. I know, but this is such a journey. For example, one of the details uh, many leave out when they do a healing video, a healing session presented uh, wherever. If you want to ground, do that from out your etheric body. That makes a difference. Just test it out. And spirit step into etheric body and allow your grounding to be reset. And do you feel any subtle shifts, any uh, differences? I do. And now we are going to play with the law of trust. And what we are going to do is we are going to ask our Holy Guardian Angel to duplicate the perfect symbol of the law of trust and have it be placed in our feet chakra. And it will be placed there as long our personal process requires it. It will be automatically be dissolved the moment this physical life ends. I see that a lot of people go bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> All those uh, sweet little symbols are being placed in our feet chakra. That is just below uh, the bottom of our feet. And let's activate the perfect symbol of the law of trust in our feet chakra. And become aware of any subtle shifts. And I would like you to play with this. So I hope you are um, clear of mind that when you are walking in a shopping mall that you can um, activate the perfect symbols of the law of trust in your feet chakra. And if you are so forgetful as I am, I would need to uh, set an alarm or I would ask my holy guardian angel or my guides to remind me to do it. And if I really want it, I also ask my life partner from please can you remind me to do uh, the activation of the perfect symbol of the love trust once we enter the mall. So then you can feel and test the difference. So perhaps you should activate it not by entering the mall but five minutes after. It's always the best way of testing, I would say. But you can also do it uh, when you are at work. Um, for example, have it activated uh, each workday two hours after you started working. And just see and test it out for a few weeks. What this does for you? Does it make a change? Does this alter your experience of existential fears? Does this uh, provide a deeper sense of trust in life? Test it out. For yourself, you know what triggers you, so you know what the best place is for you to activate this perfect symbol. I noticed that the self tools are appearing in my uh, circle. Soul healing, the inclinational string, like a DNA string, a lot of uh, lines and dots are there on those uh, 
on that string. And all the dots um, are either incarnation, being born, or conception. And the other dot is death, dying, excarnation. And we have this spiral, the funny one, I always like. And there appears a lot of dots where you felt deep fear. And let's say, what shall we play with? Uh, a specific fear, which matter to a lot of you at the moment. Finances. That's a good one. So let's uh, allow on the event space prior all the moments to appear. You felt a deep fear, existential fear, not having the finances to pay for your life. You know, the bills, uh, the mortgage, uh, the rent, the car, cars, and food on the table, etc. etc. Life insurance, uh, no health insurance. So I see a lot of dots up here and take some time for yourself to see if you also see, know or feel uh, the appearance of dots. Perhaps some of you even smell it. I mean, the sense of smell is always underestimated. And I must say, when I talk about it, I don't like the smell of uh, um, existential fears, you know, the fear of not being able to pay for life. It's uh, nasty. But we no, do know we are doing this for a reason, so I can bear the, the smell. So, now we're going to focus on the timeline, your lifeline. You know, I like to do it three years before, three years after death, three years before birth, three years after death. And I'm going to call it the appropriate healing agency who is uh, able and allowed to make changes in your life path on a contract agreement level. And also here, I see a lot of dots uh, appear, um, existential fears. And of course, if you just listen to the explanation of why I do space clearing, you know, being thrown out of the house at 12 years old, you might um, imagine <laughs> that I have a lot of those uh, dots. That's okay. And then we're going to the tree, the family tree, and I'm pretty sure almost all of us, all the viewers have um, in the ancestral line, in our family tree, um, generations who had existential fears. You know, it could be a hard winter, from where do I get the food, where do I get the wood to heat our house, yeah, like in 200 years ago. Or in the generation was a lot of fear from, oh my God, um, the husband uh, died, he provided income. How do I now survive with the kids? And those kind of things. When I look at my tree, I see some um, branches lighting up. That's good. We're going to work on that going to do that with the law of trust. So it's really easy because you can do a healing with a universal law because it's above everything. The laws create all the hits this reality. Did you know that? No, I'm sure you didn't but that's okay. This is uh, knowledge which has been hidden for millennia, so that's normal that you don't know that the true creation uh, occurs in the universal laws. And why don't you focus on your spiritual support team and ask them where your main focus should be? And I would say my main focus will be on the timeline. 
and we will allow the law of trust to run over the timeline. You know, it starts in I'm being I'm born in seventy four, so it will start in nineteen seventy one, and it will go three years beyond my death. I'm not sure yet when I will die, so that's unknown. Because it's unknown, uh, we do it the easy way. We justified it in. 100 steps, like 100% of life, and each step represents a certain amount of time. Uh, I'm now uh, 46, so I don't know. I cannot measure time. I mean, I think I know when I will die, but it will take it to take some time. We work on the timeline and we work uh, on 100 steps. That's the most easy way, then you don't have to think, you don't have to wonder, oh my god, but I don't know when I'm going to die. I know you don't know that. Many of us don't know that. So we just take the 100 steps. And we're going to ask our uh, spiritual support team to focus and activate the law of identity, the law of grace, and the law of trust. And with the focus on the law of trust, we're going to have the law of trust as a, a light dot start at the beginning of our timeline and it just goes over it. It's really pleasant, it just goes all over all events that happened in life and it will touch all moments we had existential fears and it will transform the existential fears because it will be touched by a deep uh, knowingness, a deep level of knowledge about trust. So, would you like that? Let's do that then. And let's commence with uh, step one. Step one is uh, the first percentage of your entire uh, lifeline. And in my case, when I work with the lifeline, it's always six years longer than your actual life. Because from experience, you take three years before being born, take the time to incarnate, to take time to make all the incarnational contracts. Um, you will be agreeing who you will meet, who will offer you some um, hopes, who will offer healing and also who will offer the triggers for your life lessons. And some people see it as negative. Well, at the moment when you are in the middle of it, it's negative, but it's really uh, kind of them to do so, to be the bastard which hurts you, to be the whatever names you can uh, name someone who inflicts pain upon you. And remember, this healing is being overseen by the Angels of Light of the Higher Laws, by your spiritual support team, and by my Angels of High Magic. And for the first uh, few steps, the, the healing agency who is allowed to make changes in your life path, the contracts, the agreements, etc., etc., et is doing that. I'm just going to count for now. So you can sit back, relax, focus on your time timeline. And for those who are psychic or who see, hear or feel or receive information in other way, please keep being aware of your incarnational stream, of the event space spiral and of your family tree while focusing on the timeline. And allow shifts to occur, so it's a synergetic experience. Two. Three. Four. Most of you will notice that in the first few uh, years of life, a lot of basic stuff is being triggered, is being experienced. You had uh, absorbed in any existential fears from your family. And this is also being processed. Five. Four. 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And please keep in mind, it doesn't matter how fast paced we go through the healing. The real healing occurs in the spiritual plane, mental plane, astral plane. And in that play, those planes, uh, time um, has a different quality. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Oof. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. You can hit the pause button uh, whenever you feel you need it. And if you have a notebook uh, with you, you can write down what you experience, what the memories are. Might be interesting to uh, read later, at a later point in time, what you worked on. 21. 22. 23 28, 29, 30, and remember the universal law of trust is transforming the, the events in life, it is transforming all the moments you felt a deep existential fear it has the power to do so this has to, a lot to do with my existential fears with sun will I be able to take care of him will I be able to raise him will I, I be able to provide uh, for him I am 31, 32, 33, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 
45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. You will notice a lot of transformation occurring in memories. The charge in the memories you have looking back in your past, it will transform, it will shift, it will diminish. You will receive greater insights why events happened in life. And going over the timeline with the Law of Trust, 51, 52, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. By now you might feel a lot of cold leaving your personal space. This is a type of cold, uh, extra blanket or heating up the house will not work because it comes from within. It's fine. It's You're cleansing a lot of negative energies which no longer serve you and allow it to flow out. And allow it to flow out in a neutral state. Serve this purpose. Time to go. Time to clean the bin. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. 76, 77, 78, 79, 80. And for those who are sensitive to smell, it's really interesting to see or to smell the moment um, a core issue was touched by the law of trust. That smell is being freed up and being transformed. So from a nasty smell it's being transformed in a really heavenly smell. Like a nice smelling rose. 81. 82. 83. 84. 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. And for those who have a shorter life than others, they will notice that the appropriate healing agent is already entering the space and making sure you will 
complete his lifetime in a healthy way, like having a healthy death, meaning if you died traumatic or you will die traumatic, the healing agencies will make sure you will receive a healthy death so that you will be fully embodied at the moment of dying, so nothing uh, sticks to this current body. So we have a full and complete uh, death experience. And all karma will be completed, which is uh, possible at the moment you die. And with karma completion means also contracts will be altered, dissolved, meaning that it can prevent, just doing this can prevent you will meet certain persons in the next life and it can cause to meet certain persons in the next life which can be uh, really positive, it's a positive outcome. And for those who have a long life, who are still alive, so let's go just to the steps, focus on 97 98 99 100 and with this we complete the timeline healing and we can now request the ages of the high laws to call in law of microcosm microcosm and the law of Alpha and Omega, so that this healing on the timeline also provides its fullest benefits on the family tree, the bloodline, and on our uh, incarnational string, soul healing. I'm going to request all the spiritual support team, the angelic helpers, angelic forces, to provide each viewer with a full uh, healing closure, meaning you will receive a golden sun envelope, you will receive an exchange of past life uh, information karma, so old karma will flow out, new karma will flow in, it's like a past life aura update, and the magical circle we are in, the healing space will be fully dissolved for all of you. And also the, the unity of the group healing will be dissolved, so you are no longer part of this. And that has been created just for the time being, for as long as this whole healing uh, takes place. Your grounding will be reset to the present time. And let's do that again by sending hello roses to the spirit of the center of the planet and request the spirit of the center of the planet to reset our grounding to total present time. And let's thank all the angels for assisting us in our process and let's ask uh, our higher self our Holy Guardian Angels and our spiritual support team to remind us when it is a good moment to activate the perfect uh, symbols of love trust in our feet chakra so we can test in the coming months. Here's how long ever, how long you like, what the love trust can do for us. And just know the moment you don't want them anymore, those perfect symbols embedded in your personal space, they will be just by intention, they will be dissolved, finished. And if you want to keep them, they will stay there uh, till the end of your lifetime. Then it will disappear automatically. How do you feel? I 
would love to hear in a comment down below what I did for you. And if you want to work with me uh, one on one in a private session, you can uh, make an appointment uh, via the Calendly uh, app. It's also down in the description. And I have something to ask. I made a bet. And I would like to have a thousand subscribers for the Swiss national holiday that will be the 1st of August 2021. And could you do me a favor and hit the subscribe, uh, hit the subscribe uh, button. And if you like the video, please share with those you think they can benefit from this healing. I hope to see you next time in the next healing video. And as you might have noticed, I always upload uh, he guided healing sessions on a Sunday, on a Sunday mor morning at 10 a.m. Central European time. If you want to connect with me during the video, uh, that's possible. That's possible during the premiere on the, uh, YouTube. And that's always on a Sunday, uh, 10 a.m. Central European time. I will be available in the chat. And afterwards, you can only contact me via the Calendly app. Um, and if you liked the video, give a thumbs up. And I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.